Dark Souls is hard. Dark Souls is hard. Dark Souls is hard. Every gamer and most non-gamers know Dark Souls is hard, but is it really that hard? Hi, I'm Pixel Pirate and I'm a complete Soulsborne noob. Join me as I try and flash Dark Souls Remastered, that is, beat the game without dying, on the first attempt. Okay, welcome back to the Hell Run. This is part two, so be sure to check out part one if you haven't already. Last time was getting used to the buttons and the steep learning curve this game throws at you, and we defeated the Asylum Demon first go. From Firelink, it's only a short hop to the Taurus Demon. I'm more careful making my way around the hollows than I was in the Undead Asylum. I have my tactic planned for this fight, climb the ladder, plunge attack, rinse and repeat. However, I wasn't aware of the hitbox on the Taurus's feet, which causes a death. I should have run further away before going back for the ladder. Lesson learned, so I get the win on attempt 2. Next stop, the gargoyles, but en route I pick up the drake sword, which makes light work of the black knights, and I cheese the boar with the alluring skulls and fire. In the gargoyle fight, I die again. This time I put it down to preparation. I'm researching as I play, and this fight was the last part of my notes at the time. I was eager to get gaming, so perhaps I rushed in a bit quick. This was not helped by the fact I've already lost the challenge, and even more so because of the death on the Taurus Demon. You know, I don't even have the can you flash all bosses run alive anymore. Also, you can get support here from Solaire, but like I said, my research was a bit sketchy at this point and I couldn't figure out how to get him to turn up. Still, some good learning and I pinky promise to try harder from here on out. Anyway, I win second attempt and ring that bell. I head to Dark Root to level a bit more before taking on the Capra Demon and heading down to Blighttown, but I must admit, I die a number of times as the enemies are pretty strong and attacking groups. But grinding is exactly what I did. I go back to the Undead Parish and grind for levels and Titanite Shards. I level up the wrong weapon. I wanted the Claymore for lunging attacks but did the Zweihander by accident. It's still good though with more damage output, but it's slower and harder to use in narrow sections. It does allow me to beat the Titanite Demon first go though. I summon Beatrice for help on the upcoming boss. I find the whole hollow human thing quite confusing. I think this is why I didn't get the help on the gargoyles, but Beatrice makes light work of the Midnight Butterfly giving me a flash. That makes it two all on the bosses. I try to beat a wyvern in the Valley of the Drakes and nearly die, then I head for the Hydra. Not a boss, but I fight it anyway. Unfortunately, I should have left it alone as I end up falling in the deep water try one, but win try two. I also take out the Golden Golem here with ease. I climb the big ladder by the waterfall just to have a nosy, but quickly decide to run away. Havel is next in my crosshairs. I do die once to a one hit kill, but then win the next time round. I'm kind of pleased I didn't try and find him when I was back at the Undead Berg. With some soul levels from Darkroot, I head back to the Undead Berg to face Capra. I waste two and a half thousand souls worth of firebombs trying and failing to cheese him, then I enter the fog gate anyway. Head straight for the stairs and take the dogs out first. I try and have fire to my weapon, but maybe you can't do it with a dragon sword. But with the dogs out of the way, I switch back to the slower Zweihander and apply the burn. It's not pretty, but I take him down for zero deaths. The lower undead burg is next. I avoid getting cursed and petrified on the lower levels, so on to the gaping dragon. I can't summon Solaire for some reason, but it doesn't matter as I remember I need to take out the Channeler first, as he can buff the Gaping Dragon. Once done, don't rest at the bonfire, otherwise he respawns. So I went looking for him, went the wrong way, and ended up getting cursed and dying. Annoying, but I go the right way the second time, and find the Cheeky Blighter doesn't respawn. So I went and got cursed and died for no reason. Anyway, I go back to the bonfire as I might as well refill my Estus now, and I use a Purging Stone. Finally, I can head to the boss. I reverse hollow to become human. I still don't really know the difference, but now I'm pretty sure that you have to be human to summon. So I head back to where Solaire would be, and you still can't summon him for some reason. With no sum bro, I'm soloing. Which isn't a bad thing, as apparently the boss has buffed health if you summon. I head down to the next level in search of the fog gate, and find Solaire. So despite what I just said, I summoned him. He distracts the gaping dragon, so despite the bigger hit point pool, I decide to use my sun boy. I set up equipment so I can switch between the faster Drake Sword and the Zweihander, and also ensure I don't fat roll. Then I enter the fight. Solaire goes and dies almost straight away. I wait for charge attacks, but they seem to take forever. I do get hurt, 
Use all my Estus, and even use one Humanity. I whittle their hit point down, causing big damage with the Zweihander headshots, despite forgetting to switch to two-handed. But it doesn't matter, as I managed to flash the gaping dragon. She didn't end up using her toxic morning breath, which is a relief. I rest at the bonfire, level up, and open the doors to Blight Town. Blight Town, the joyous place. I take it slow, being careful to avoid poison and toxic as much as possible. I miss the jump to some equipment I'm unlikely to even use, but it's not the end of the world as I don't fall to my death. There is some scary moments here, like this wobbly bridge, but then the inevitable happens, and I fall to my death due to the stupid auto aim. And as a total scrub, die chasing my cells. I make it to the bottom, and only getting toxic once is a small consolation. After grinding out some large Titanite shards, I ride the water wheel to go back to Firelink and reinforce that Estus flask. Yummy. On to Quaylag, I summon Mildred and enter the boss fight with a sliver of health missing. As soon as I start, I remember I didn't equip fire resistant armor, but I'm not going to menu mid battle, so suck it up. The plus 10 Zweihander is brutal though, and she poses very little threat. I got caught with her flame body attack once, but it only hit about half health, and there's plenty of time to heal up in this fight. A few swipes later, I flash Quayleg, which is quite ironic in her case. I ring the second bell, opening the gate to Sen's fortress. But before entering Sen's funhouse, I head back to Darkroot to try and tame a very good boy. I know this will be harder now than later, but I don't want to just over-level every boss either. Back where I explored after the Hydra, but this time, I'm prepared. I kill some giant shrooms, then prepare for Doggo. I contemplate using the cheese bow method, but decide I'm far too good for that. Or maybe I couldn't get the jump onto the slab right, even with no equipment? Anyway, I enter the fight. The technique here is to run at Seath and roll when he swings a sword. I'm doing well, but eventually I succumb. But on my second attempt, I do so much better. This is a skill based boss, so no shame in losing, but it is annoying as I really think I could have done it, and it would have been a good one to have flashed too. With the doggo dead, I make my way inside Sen's fortress. I nearly, very nearly die with an accidental roll, but all's well. I go too early on the boulder dash, but also get hit at the top, which is just brilliant. After taking a break from the game for a bit, I obviously forgot how to play. I die to some medium difficulty snake heads and then die here at the start. Got caught by the trap and didn't retreat to heal for some reason. Full sense of grandeur. So there goes my souls and humanity. Up on the roof, I make the risky jump to the merchant to buy some poison arrows. Except he doesn't sell any. That will make life harder later on. I bring the summon with me to the iron giant and he is easiest boss so far. Easier than the Asylum Demon, and I'd even say easier than the Moonlight Butterfly. Touching Sen's ring takes me to Analondo. The giant knights give good soul output, and I get my strength to 34, allowing me to two-hand the Great Dragon King Big Axe thing. However, now I've leveled strength that much, the Zweihander is just as appealing, and it will only get better, so I stick with that mainly. Proof of that is the terrible start I had to the gargoyle battle with the axe. It's just too slow despite its big damage output. The section with the painted guardians. I thought I had a cheese strat working for me, but I wasn't sure I was hurting them so I moved closer, had to engage, then got my first death due to terrible, terrible, really terrible menuing. I don't like switching between bow and sword. Something I definitely recommend practicing to anyone trying this run. I get revenge with a headshot, and this one kindly kamikazes to their doom. I'm sure every Dark Souls player does that. And as I don't have poison arrows to cheese the infamous Analondo archers, I try the run straight in method, leading to an inevitable death. Do this again, lol, and back to the archers, and this time I smash it. So just the one death on these tricky fellas. Seriously, just bring poison arrows. Right, up next, possibly the most infamous boss in the game, maybe even series. So I'm gonna leave it here, and pick up the Executioner and Dragon Slayer next time. Thanks so much for watching, if you're enjoying this series, please think about liking, subscribing, giving me a comment, all that jazz, I'd really appreciate it. On screen are a few more videos that you might be interested in. 
and I put up a link to part three once it's published. And as always, I'll see you in an 8-bit.